Yes. Asu one week warning strike today entered its second day and uh, we don't know what will happen after one week. But then the Senate con uh, actually entered into the case yesterday. They intervened on the case yesterday and uh, we're looking for, for something positive for Monday. I have uh, Dr. Kennedy Modogo here this morning. It's with the University of Benin. You're welcome to the program. Thank you very much. Good morning, viewers. And Dr. Agaraisi Usifu, lecturer at AAU Ekboma. You're welcome to the program this morning. Good morning, viewers. Thank you, Ifema. Dr. Kennedy, what's your take on the strike? Uh, quite frankly, uh, the strike is long overdue. Let me quickly state here that it is not in our tradition to embark on strike without cogent reasons. Mm. Now, the question that should easily come to mind is why is ASU on strike? I think um, Nigerians want to know why we have embarked on this one week warning strike. I think the reasons are very clear. In 2009, the federal government entered into an agreement with ASU. In 2013, they signed an MOU resulting from the government's inability or deliberate refusal, so to speak, to implement the agreement it's willingly entered into with ASU. All overtures, all you know, attempts to ensure that the government fulfill its so part of that bargain you know, was met with a brick wall. And still in the spirit of negotiation, ASU went ahead to enter into an MOU with the federal government, which they agreed to implement. As we speak, that agreement has not been implemented. ASU wrote, in fact, to this new government, the new federal government of President Muhammadu Buhari, yeah. ASU wrote about 18 reminders to the government. Still, nothing has been done. And remember in September, ASU threatened. Why? Because the Academic Staff Union of Universities, ASU, is the only union that fights for not itself, but for the students, for other stakeholders. ASU fights for parents. ASU fights for, remember in 2013, why we suspended the strike was because the government released you know, a very you know, little fragment of the money to revitalize infrastructural facilities in the universities. Not because federal government paid us. Get it right, because we, we know of other unions that go on strike because of salary increments, go on strike because of allowances and entitlements. But as beyond all this, look into seeing a reformed university system in Nigeria, and indeed, other educational institutions in Nigeria. So to that extent, we felt, and of course, after talking to the government, writing series of letters, and they were not attended to, we have decided to embark on one with one strike to press on our demands, just like you saw yesterday, the Senate president has entered into the matter like you rightly you know, acknowledged. That is the only language the Nigerian government understands, and it's so, it's so disheartening very appalling that you have to wait for a union to embark on strike before you begin to make arrangements towards resolving the issues in contention. So, has we is on strike because the government has failed to honor the 2009 agreement and again also failed to honor the 2013 Memorandum of Understanding. It willingly, without being coerced, signed with the union. And I think it is apt at this moment to let the members of the public know that ASU is not on strike for selfish interests, but to see to it that the Nigerian university system can be a place where future leaders indeed can be trained, that will be responsible to lead the country from the prevailing decrepitude that it currently faces. This is why the union is on one week one strike. Okay, we understand that um, while some are happy that this strike is going on, there are still some people that think this is not the right time for that to happen. Dr. I say I don't know where your stand is. Thank you very much. There's never a right time 
or wrong time for any industrial action. And um, industrial unions exist for the welfare of its members. Nigeria is now in recession. Mm. The Minister for Finances, uh, Social Justice, uh, a way, a technical way, I think she's a linguist. Okay. So, but the recession affects not only ASU members, but the parents of uh, the children who are in school. And people in government, they have so much privileges. They are cushioned or immune from the effects of recession. For the purpose of education, for the general public, mm. recession means uh, negative growth in GDP for a second consecutive quarter. But in dilemma's terms, from an academic point of view, as an, economics, as an economist, recession happens when there's high level of inflation, there's high level of unemployment, there's uh, discrete infrastructure facilities, you are aware of the power situation, the bad roads, and then overall, the welfare of uh, members of the people in the recessed economy, uh, the, the welfare has gone very much well down. The economy might go into a depression from recession. So, this is the right time for us to go on strike over uh, the issues that uh, my colleague talked about earlier on, specifically the 2009 agreement, the 2013 MOU, and I want to add to it, there is the disassessment report following contracted meetings, negotiations, and what have you, the government and also entered into an assessment of the needs of individual universities. As you are aware, we have 151 universities in Nigeria as of today. The private universities form a hefty 69 majority. The remaining number is shared almost equal half between federal and state universities. But in terms of student enrollment, student number, about 90% of Nigerian students are in public universities, where we have ASU. The private universities are not able to get students. Why? Because we are in a recession. The fees are steep because universities globally ought not to be a profit-making commercial mercantilist uh, ventures. And because we'll ASU keeps going on US. strike. Yes. Because ASU that's keeps going on strike. No, 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 that's no, no, why no. some of I them are know. still no, in no, private no, that is not true. That, that is not true, uh, Ifoma. L let me come in here. You know, you said this is not the right time. There are some persons are saying this is not the right time yeah. for the union to go on strike. And why? Oh, Nigeria is in recession. It, it, the last time I came here, I, 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 I asked a question, which up to this moment, I haven't gotten an answer to. I'm not aware of any political hate, hate whose salaries have been held by the government. I'm not aware that the cost of governance, both at the federal and the state level, has reduced significantly. We still have litany of political aids, foreign trips here and there. And I think Nigeria is in recession. How many of their children are in public universities? That is the point we are making because they are the same persons that license the private universities. And they take their children up. Their children are not in public universities because they can afford it. So the non-affordability is for those who are not in government. So for those who are in government, they don't have problem with you know, private universities. That is why they send their children there, because in the first instance, just you are aware, just last month, eight private universities have again been licensed. What does that tell you? That the final obituary of public universities in Nigeria has come. Why? They want to bemuse, they, they, you know, they want to debilitate the functionality of the public university system in Nigeria, such that only private universities will be invigorated. And again, these are conduit pipe through which some proprietors make parents dry. How many Nigerians can send their children to private universities? Now, the question is this. I mean, the issue is this. The government has not lived up to its responsibility. We have a president in this country who said, university does not produce any good. Why should it command so much money? You see, that's a leftist idea. 
it tells you how you know docile such an individual could be to think that university does not produce physical products there is no country that can be better than the products of these universities there is, it's, 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 look at singapore if i look at china look at malaysia here because research that culminates into concrete economic development should emanate from the university. That is why in, in, in other climes, what governments do, even to private universities, is to sufficiently fund them in the area of research and development. It is this research output that now culminates into concrete economic development. Why are we where we are today? Why do we have governments who expect, gov Nigeria governments, both at state and federal level, experiments? They go back and forth. Oh, this policy, and let us ensure that you cannot withdraw more than $100 a day. Oh, let mm -hmm. us reverse. And uh, you see, let, let, yeah, they're experimenting. Why? Because they have not come to terms with the real issues that concern concrete economic management. So to that extent, they experiment with everything. Why? Because they have refused to come back to the university, the average tower. That name emanates from the father. When all hope is lost, when solutions can no longer be found on the street, you return to the ivory tower. When, I mean, where ideas rule, where these research outputs are churned out and they are used for certain development. I think there is no better time than this. Now, okay. now for instance, we, we, have we not informed the mass public enough? We told them in September that we will go on strike. Please mm -hmm. tell the government so that the parent, because when ASU is on strike, you know, the ball now bounces to the court of ASU. Oh, ASU is on strike again because they want their salaries to be increased. That is not the issue. I must tell you, quite frankly, that is not the issue at stake. I want okay. to also inform you, before you ask the next question, mm. I want to make a comment that this thing called TET Fund, Tertiary Education Trust Fund, emanated from a previous ASU strike. How did it happen? When ASU went on strike, and then sensitize the public about uh, the reasons for the strike, particularly about the parallel state of funding, about the decadent infrastructure, about the nondescript nature of uh, human habitation for the students. During this assessment report I talked about earlier, you saw how students were doing short puts. I'm sure you're aware of that, short put. Female students, they defecate and wrap it in a cellophane and then hip it up. It's bestial. It is dehumanizing. And then Universities are universities. There's a universe in the university. There's a nexus between town and gown. Now that we're in the recession, like I said earlier on, is the correct time to break the alarm bell once again. But you are fighting for me, I understand. But I am graduating. Like I've paid my house rent and by December I should be leaving but if you go on this strike, that means I'll still have to pay another one year house rent. Thank you. Thank you. What? Thank you. Thank you. What ASU is doing now is just a one week warning strike. And do we don't immediately, know. Immediately after the one week strike, all things being equal, will return to work. What if all things are not equal? Hopefully. Hopefully. The stakeholders in the system will be appropriately sensitized. And then we'll do what is right. Thank God, also, like you said earlier on, the National Assembly, the Senate in particular, mm. summoned the Minister of Education to give a report on the situation. And then, also, leadership have been meeting with National Assembly members too over this matter. Sure. Good. In addition to the letters and the several meetings and so on. And then, the Minister, the Honorable Minister for Education, Mala Madamu Adamu, I'm afraid. He doesn't want to act on this matter. But like my colleague said earlier on, there are several private universities licensed to the bourgeoisie class. We operate a capitalist political economy, capitalist economic system that allows the accumulation of capital and then they ride on the blood of the people that produce the wealth. Things must be done properly. Granted that the, the world is now unipolar, following the collapse of the Soviet Union. You know, if it was the time of the Cold War, you don't try this kind of a thing. Look at the election in 
the U.S. The Trump one. Nobody gave him a chance. The same with the visa suit strike. People will think that uh, the government will not listen. Yeah, yeah correct. You see, let, let, let me just add to it. You know, in response to your question, yeah. you know, a student has paid rent. Yes. And uh, if ASU goes on strike, let's go assume, which is not my intent, that upon the expiration of the one week one strike, the government, in its characteristic manner, will still refuse to accede to the demands of ASU. And the strike is declared indefinite. Now, what happens to the student? Now, you see, when you are seeking a better society, all stakeholders must be co-contractors. Mm -hmm. Now, I rather produce a graduate that what is sought in six years instead of a four-year course than to produce an idiot in three years. We are being accused of producing unemployable graduates. Being in school for six years, I, I spent more than the number, required number of years, not because I didn't pass my exam, because I still went on strike okay. in search of a better... So it is not as... You know, what is much, much more important to me is to produce a graduate that can stand the 21st century graduate anywhere and contribute meaningfully to the society. Not to, oh, fine. I, I, and the facilities to do that are not there. Exactly. The laboratories are empty. The engineering students, they haven't had a lift machine. And then, even those who are in the digital disciplines, computer science, computer engineering, electronic engineering, they don't have the digital space to work with. HB launches digital studio because you are into R&D. R&D is what drives any society forward. Universities, as members, don't have any grants. They don't have any funding by government who is the owner of the university to fund research. A lot of departments insist that students must do a project before they graduate. Research project. Mm. What have you researched into? We're not able to attract funds from international multilateral agencies because we don't have the infrastructure. Even the academia, who are very competent, because a lot of us graduated when the Naira had not collapsed in the United States. Mm. At the University of Fair in the 70s, my Naira was two and a half dollars. You will recall going on a historical excursion that when the Naira came on board as a legal tender, as a currency in 1973, there was a law that established a rate ratio of one Naira to dot seven six five dot six five uh, dollars. Okay. You know? Okay, um we take a pause at this point for the news update for half past nine. And when we return, let's uh, look at some of uh, this agitation by Asun. Stay tuned. All right, thank you so much, Wilson. And uh, on this uh, last lap of the discussion this morning, which is on Asu strike, I want to look at some of uh, uh, Asu's agitation. Now, someone will say, uh, when they say under funding of uh, the education sector, one would expect that it's at the point of a submission of the budget that they should come out and say, no, this is what we've always asked for. So why not at that time, you know? Uh, let, 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 let me come in here. There was never a time that Asu's voice became you know. You see, not when you have a father, so to speak, that is willing to listen. Every child has opportunity to talk. Daddy, I want X, Y, Z. It is incumbent on the responsible father to listen to the child and say, okay, I will take your request into cognizance and in my monthly allowances to you, I will see how I can improve on it. Last year's budget, 2050 budget mm. to education sector was 11%. This year, it came down to 8%. Why now, the UNESCO benchmark is minimum 26. of 26%. Okay. Now, how do you explain that? Now you are aware of the issues that trail that budget. As we speak, nobody is talking about that. Shortly, we will hear another budget for 2017. When the implementation of the 2016 budget is still very hazy, <coughs> and of course suggests the chronic planlessness of this government, with apologies. Now, we have spoken out on several occasions. You fund education. You see, you, you, you can't give what you don't have. It's understandably so. It's difficult to tell a man who didn't go to school to increase budget for education. Because mm. if we tell you that education is not producing oil. But he forgets that 
the technology for better oil exploration and production should come from an ivory tower. So we have spoken out our initial. There was never a time we relaxed. But just like I said, you know, it's a case of an irresponsible father who doesn't take his children seriously. That is where we find ourselves. And like I said, it has led us to this because we have seen from history that Nigerian governments only would listen to strike, unfortunately, as that may be. That is what you know, is obtainable, and that is what works. Until any sector goes on strike, the government will not. Are you aware that in some federal varsities, some lecturers have not been paid for several months running? Some that have been paid have salaries staggered, you know, 60 percent, 40 percent of their salaries paid. Some no subvention, university that exams cannot run properly, and you want to produce graduates. And tomorrow you will tell us that Nigeria graduates are unemployable. It doesn't just add up. It's antithetic to common logic. You know, I, I, I can't, as an individual, I can't fathom it. So, we have, like I said, always spoken out, and we are still speaking. And not until the Nigerian government takes academics seriously, takes the Nigerian child education seriously, as we begin and will continue to vocalize those issues that affect the Nigerian child, those, those issues that make it difficult for the Nigerian child to acquire a competitive education. Because our graduates today, some of them are not confident in themselves. Because they have not been opportune to get education in an environment. And I, I tell my students, I said, you see, you not believe that to get anything done in Nigeria, you must, you must struggle. To, you know, for instance, to get admission, you must know the man that knows the other man. Mm. To get a job when you graduate, you must have an uncle who knows one commissioner, who knows another person. So because you don't serve. So are, 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 are you getting it? Mm. Now, this is a wrong culture that the Nigerian students are faced with. Okay. So the extent that when you not tell them the ideal thing, they, they say, ah, no, it, it cannot just happen. Why? Because they don't know what is ideal. Okay. So the, the abnormal to them is the ideal. All I right. want to add to the issue of the budget at the appropriate time for us to voice his demands. Yes. Well, of course, this is the end of close end of year and preparation of another budget is in sight. Furthermore, the National Assembly that has the oversight function for budget constitution and consequently passing into law uh, already summoned the Minister of Education. So, to our earlier discussion, it means that this is the appropriate time for us to ring the alarm bell. So, let's okay, let's look at other, other agitation. The, the agreement, uh, some of the agreements, some other agreements in the in the 2009 that was uh, actually reached by ASU and the federal government that they are still agitating for. Yes, the 2009 agreement mm -hmm. has a list of issues that were mutually agreed upon and signed by the principles of both the government and ASU. Yes, because why I'm asking you, I just need you to voice them out because uh, one general belief is, ah, is ASU now. They're asking for salary increments. They're asking for pension age. They're asking for increments even for their pension and all that. My colleague already mentioned it, that it had nothing to do with the uh, individual welfare of ASU members. So apart Rather, from low, uh, on the funding of the education sector, yes. What else are they agitating for? There's also the issue of university autonomy. The management and operational issues of the university should be left to the structure of the university system that provides for that. The governing council, the senate, at all. And then you're also aware that the integrity of the educational process itself is operated upon the national policy on education. So ASU is very much aware of that. And the 2009 agreement and even the MOU have to do with critical funding and the provision of students' hostels, students' lecture spaces. And then the 30 billion you talked about in our release was meant to build additional students' hostels. And I mentioned about Pet Fund earlier on. Yes. But for also strikes like this one, the universities become glorified secondary schools, particularly universities like my own. You see Bodley written on a lot of projects. Third form, 2013 intervention, 
the biggest project, the biggest infrastructure in Ambrosalina University Boma is the new multi-purpose hall, like the Akindeko of Unibank. It's a 2013 Fund intervention project, which arises from uh, dividends of ASU strike. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then when you the, said new, the, the when you said new, I thought yeah. you were going to say yeah. 2016. No, no, you mean no, no. 2013? Of course. Of course. Of course. Uh, that's the most recent. Yes. Most recent. And then, you know we have water problem in Epoma. It is that fund also a amount even of also strike that provides water tanker again 2011, 2012, and they are brand new vehicles. The coastal buses that uh, used to bring students to Benin to ITV or to NUJ press center is also. 2014, that's most recent now, yeah. intervention. So the universities are carcasses of what is to happen, waiting for virtual to devote them. Mm. It is, it yeah. is, it is. Yeah, I think uh, my colleague has spoken extensively on them, but just an icing on the cake. You know, we, this forum cannot give us that opportunity to exhaust the content of that agreement. Of course. But of course, we can, you know, go into some highlights. Um, he has mentioned from everything centered around funding. Yes. Funding of you, know, you go, you went to university. Look at what the classrooms are. Now you know in some universities they still use chalk, 21st century chalk, chalk. There's a chalkboard. It's appalling. Go to the hostels. Now these are issues we raised before the government, and the needs assessment was carried out. And a detailed report of the news assessment is available. In fact, they took photographs of hostels, laboratories, where stoves were used as bossy burners. Kerosene stoves. Kerosene stoves used as bossy burners. A room meant for four persons, 60 pence fat. Sleeping is rationed. You go and read. When you come back, I sleep. Now, these were some of the issues. Now, suddenly, the federal government came up and said, okay, federal staff school, I mean, um, university staff schools will no longer be a part of its responsibilities. That the university should not raise funds to pay the salaries of staff who lecture students, I mean children of staff in those mm. schools. Suddenly, now they repudiate that agreement. Now, there is the issue of end academic allowances. For instance, lecturers take so much responsibilities upon themselves, arising from government's deliberate attempt not to recruit more staff. It's, in my faculty, it's supposed to be a lecturer to 30 students. But it's just by a lecturer will be lecturing over 500 students, not even with a public address system to aid your voice. Mm. You have to move around. Mm. Yes. Now, you are supposed to supervise, let's say, 10 students maximum. You are supervising as high as 15, 20, 50. sometimes 30 students. 50. 50. Are you getting it? Now, this heals on you added responsibilities, which the government does not take care of. That's okay, fine. Since you cannot employ more staff to take up this responsibility, you have to pay us what you call excess workload, which are end academic allowances. Postgraduate supervision have not been paid. You know, you go for external exams, internal examination, yet you are not paid. And there is no how the school will not ask the students to go and pay the examiner. That is immoral. So, the government has reneged but that is the on all of now, this what and several others. It's program students. Uh, Are you getting it? So have to it's, pay their it's, way it's, through. It's, it's, it's on that they also note. pay school no. fees to the university authority no. across the state and federal now, universities. They made attempts, you know, to increase school fees, and ASU equally fought it. That's what I'm, you know, I started by saying ASU is the only union that fights for the students. ASU rose against said, "No, you must fund education." And like he rightly said. Now, someone may be quick to say, how come the university cannot generate research that are grant attracting? Mm -hmm. You don't have the facility to so do. How can you conduct a research when you have no laboratory? We have brilliant Nigerian students and Nigerian lecturers. Yes. Like I tell my students, I say, you see, do you know what a faculty means? A faculty is not a building. Mm -hmm. No, that's not a faculty. It's not a faculty of social sciences. No. The faculty is when the students and the lecturers engage in academic intercourse that eventually leads to ideas mm, that are now used to produce results to revitalize key sectors of the economy. That is a faculty. And what you see today is more or less, you know, having to teach the students theoretically. Go and read and pass exam. And the student reads pass exam, makes a first class. 
congratulations that may be. It but the students yeah. does not have that mental fecundity to exude what he has. He has not even learned the right thing because the environment has not offered itself to enable the students to learn the right thing he or she is supposed to learn. And that leads us into another quagmire. Okay. He talked about one raw issue that touched me, the intellectual intercourse between students and lecturers. I want to mention to the public one thing that is missing in the universities that makes us to grab the issue of seminar. Yes. Seminar. Yes. Particularly for postgraduate students. Seminar, the dictionary definition of seminar is an academic activity that involves students under supervision of faculty. Talked about earlier. Faculty. Faculty, like he said, is not physical structure, but the, the intellectual resource in an academic institution. So, seminar in postgraduate students and final year graduate students is neglected because of the paucity of funding. All right. So, a seminar is when students are under supervision and then they come up to give what they have super been supervised for on that the experts there to watch and see okay. in, in semblance of the origin of universities from a global perspective this thing you heard about eureka have discovered yeah. then you have to call your peers yes the peer review mechanism yeah. in the system but seminars cannot hold because these facilities are not there due to gross underfunding and therefore we are kind of uh, pained to produce the so-called half have big graduates, mm -hmm. and then they cannot hold themselves in the industry. Okay. Then ITV and other users of our products ought to retrain them. The purpose of mass communication ought to have this kind of digital studio yeah. and then higher level personnel who would train the people. But in the university system, these things are not there. And then this is part of the envelope of underfunding that ASU is uh, talking about right now. Okay. So, all right, thank you so much, Dr. Agarese Osifo, lecturer at AAU, for coming on the program today. Thank you. Thank you, madam. Dr. Kennedy Modogu, lecturer at Uniben, thank you also for coming on the program today. My pleasure. Well, you've heard it from them that it's okay, doesn't make it right. But in case you missed out on any of our discussions this morning or you want to revisit, you can watch it on our YouTube page on www.youtube.com forward slash ITV video NG and uh, best and beauty will be here at 11 o'clock for global sports that's our show today thanks a lot for watching on behalf of Wilson Amasho and the men that works behind the camera I am Ifoma Igwe have yourself a beautiful Thursday morning this